Hi, my name is Kylie Bollinger, and I study German and history at Portland State University in Portland, Oregon. Today, I'm going to talk about one of the special acquisitions held in the rare books and manuscripts section of PSU's special collections, the Nuremberg Chronicle, also known as the Liebe Chronicarum or the Schädelische Weltchronik. Thanks to the generosity of Dr. Jill H. Rosenthal's donation through the Department of Judaic Studies at PSU, we are home to many pages from this remarkable text. The Nuremberg Chronicle was published in 1493 by Hartmann Schädel and is one of the most remarkable of all incunabula, that is, books that were printed before 1500. It consists of nearly 400 pages, also known as folios, that contain a front or a recto side and a back or verso side and 1,804 illustrations. The Nuremberg Chronicle is, in many ways, an illustrated encyclopedia that chronicles world history according to various sources that Hartmann Schadel, along with at least six other authors, compiled using Schadel's extensive library. Like many medieval chronicles, it is divided into seven ages that are based on the same narrative structure as the Bible, from the creation of the world to the end of time. Thus, the Nuremberg Chronicle includes information on biblical stories and genealogies, as well as cities and history and other information as was understood by people in the late 15th century. The Nuremberg Chronicle is perhaps most well known for its incredible illustrations that were created by renowned printer and painter Michael Wolgemuth and his team of artists in Nuremberg. Michael Wolgemuth was Albrecht Dürer's teacher, and although many have speculated that the young Dürer contributed to the Nuremberg Chronicle, recent scholarship has shown that his collaboration was probably unlikely. The Nuremberg Chronicle contains a total of 1,804 illustrations that are from 652 woodcuts, many of which are repeatedly used throughout the book. The illustrations depict portraits, genealogies, which are shown with vines connecting the people, maps, and most significantly, cityscapes of important medieval cities. Nearly every page has some form of illustration, and the illustrations themselves are extremely detailed especially considering they came from woodcuts. The city portraits themselves are significant as well because many of these cities' earliest known depictions are found within the Chronicle's pages. Additionally, for many cities, the Nuremberg Chronicle contains the earliest, or even in some cases the only story of the city's origin or the etymology of its name. The Chronicle also details facts about these cities' economies, cultures, and trades as they were understood circa 1490. The Nuremberg Chronicle reflected the technology and talent of Germany's early printing history and the tenets of humanism, and were thus meant to be distributed widely. About 1,400 copies in Latin were printed, as well as an additional 700 copies in German. Of these, about 400 Latin and 300 German copies have survived into the 21st century. Many of the books have been dismantled and sold by individual folio, several of which PSU has been lucky enough to acquire. Despite the problems associated with biblioclasty, or this disassembling of books, PSU is nevertheless happy to host these living historical documents. PSU Library is home to 17 folios, most of which are in the original Latin. A few are in German. These folios may be viewed virtually in the PSU Library's catalog, but today I will present four especially remarkable pages. One of the most significant folios we have is Folio 1. The recto side details both a secular and non-secular account of the creation of the world, and the illustration on the verso side is one of the most intricate in the chronicle. Also known as the frontispiece, the verso side of Folio 1 is a full-page, partially illuminated woodcut illustration often referred to as the Creator, because of its depiction of the Creator seated on a throne in the middle of the image. Above the Creator is a banner that cites Psalm 32, For he spake, and it was done, he commanded, and it stood fast. The image is adorned with many decorative elements and also contains two shields intentionally left blank near the bottom of the page. As can be seen here, the page held by PSU has been partially illuminated with red and gold. 
Another folio we are lucky enough to have access to is folio 286, whose rectocide includes information about the Bavarian duchies and whose versocide continues this description and includes a half-page fully illuminated depiction of the then territory of Upper Bavaria. This image is representative of many cityscapes throughout the Chronicle. Here you get a feel for the architecture, the churches, bridges, thatched Fachwerk homes and castles, and also a feel for the topography and the significance of waterways. Even though we might not think of waterways when we think of Bavaria today, the text below the image mentions the Danube, the Iser, the Inn, and the Lech rivers that were so crucial to transportation in the 15th century. Folio 16 is representative of the genealogies that this book is so well known for. Throughout the book, biblical and regal families were often depicted as torsos emerging from flowers that are connected through vines carried by various people. Folio 16 describes the lineage of Noah through Japheth, the third of his seven sons. Both sides of this folio depict a beautiful genealogy with vines connecting each small illuminated portrait. The recto side of folio 257 is one of my favorites. It contains a large woodcut illustration with an accompanying paragraph describing the fall of a meteor in Constantinople, also known as Istanbul, on July 12, 1490, just a few decades after the capital of the Byzantine Empire was conquered by the Ottoman Empire. In the text, the meteor is described scientifically as an unprecedented storm occurring due to the fire of the three upper constellations intermingled with moisture and heat. The text also notes that the believers, or Christians, maintained that the meteor was an act of divine providence, while the unbelievers were said to believe that this great storm originated from the planet Saturn. This is an example of the encyclopedia-like nature of the Chronicle in its attempt to detail multiple points of view on the same event. It is, however, also important to recognize that the text is based on a Eurocentric Christian perspective, as demonstrated here and on the Verso side of this page. Folio 257's Verso side contains one of the Nuremberg Chronicle's most notorious woodcuts, known as the Burning of the Jews. This particular illustration depicts an event on October 22, 1492, in the German city of Sternberg, where Jews were accused of stealing and desecrating a Eucharistic host and were thus burned at the stake in retaliation. Understanding the past helps us to better understand and cope with the present. Understanding the way things were in history and the way people thought and acted is an extremely important step towards a better overall understanding of the human condition which we all share. Such an understanding roots us in time, and such a background can help to better prepare us for the future. I would even argue that a solid foundation in understanding the past and present world is a key step towards being able to make a difference in our own futures. I am so glad that original artifacts such as these pages still exist in the world today, because being able to physically hold a piece of history leaves me speechless. The ability to physically hold and view such treasures is truly a gift.